Hello, my name is Trevor Lewis, and this is another video from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. In this video, we're using X-Design, and we are going to be talking about the differences between using a spline tool or some other drawing tools and how that affects how you're able to draw things and how you're able to use the offset. So uh, what I did first here was I grabbed an image drawn by a student, and I've put this on the XY plane. Uh, the way I did that was I went to the tools menu and I used this button right here. I did not scale this. I don't know that there's a great way to scale these images. So what I'm basically doing is just building this proportionally and then planning on scaling it in the 3D printer, which is not ideal. But since I'm, I'm making this into a cookie cutter, as, as long as I know sort of how thick to make things proportionally, when I scale it down to make it cookie size, it should work out fine. Um, I actually have already done some work I'll show you later, but we're going to focus on these eyes and face right now. And we're going to look at a couple of different ways to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the XY plane as a selection and go into the sketch menu. So I've got these shape tools. I've got just a straight line tool. And then I've got these other shape tools. And then I've got the spline tool. And I like the spline tool in a lot of programs because basically it's click where you want the line to be. So it's pretty easy to do. You can make curves, you can make sharp points, you can make straight lines. Um, one thing I don't like about X Design is it doesn't seem to scale. So if I zoom in, um, or if I'm, I'm trying to make something small, um, it will end my spline when I don't mean to. So if I start clicking like this and I click right here, um, or if I go like, yeah, see the second time when I clicked right here, even though that's the same distance, it thinks I was trying to click here even though I wasn't, so it ended my spline. And it can be hard to get going again uh, when you do it that way. So when you're using the spline tool like this, you kind of have to either scale up your objects or intentionally make sure that your spline points are far apart, which prevents you from doing some details. See, I ended it again. So I get kind of frustrated with that, um, but See, it's real easy to end your splines accidentally, and then you might as well just use the straight line segment tool. Um, but you can use a spline tool. If you want to create a sharp edge like this, you click, and then you do want to end it. So you can click on that point again, and then start a new spline from there. Um, but that, that ended again, and I didn't mean to. So you can kind of see the, the troubles that I'm having here with the spline tool. Um, the other disadvantage of the spline tool is when I, if I take the offset tool here, let me move my picture out of the way here, the offset tool, cause I want to draw this line out a ways so I can, I can actually take this black part here and extrude it. It won't offset a spline. So I have to, instead of offset, I would have to grab the spline tool again and draw it again, but let's back this up. And let's try something a little different. So another way to do it. So you know, if X Design improves the spline tool and some updates, so it doesn't end automatically, so that we can use offsets, or at least at least so it doesn't end automatically when you're within a five. Like this is a, I think this is a ten millimeter grid right here. If you're within a ten millimeter grid, it ends automatically often. Um, so that's not ideal because I like to make small things for my 3D printer. So um, you could make them really big and then scale them down. That's one way to do it. Um, but another way to, to, to handle this is the straight line tool. So if I'm just using the straight line tool, I can actually get really close. And you can see I'm getting all sorts of reference lines here. I can turn those off by clicking this button because they're a little distracting. Uh, this little thing here, which uh, provides... Uh, sketch entity suggestions in relation to other models and blah, 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 blah. That sometimes gets in my way when I'm drawing. Um, but because it doesn't always guess where it should go. Like right now I want to click there, but I can't because that's in the way. So, you know, I kind of have to work around that. And then as I'm working, I might need to scroll in and out, or I might need to pan by holding the control button and middle or right clicking. But this is a little bit faster, you can see, because I don't have to worry about being so far apart. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to make sure I click. See, now I want it to snap, so I have to turn the snap back on, because I want it to make sure that I'm snapping to that point so that I fill it in. So when you use the line tool, then you can take offset. Um, but when you have so many little lines, it's computationally a little bit difficult 
for um, this one was not so bad, but when I did the whole outline, it took a really long time for it to calculate the offset, and it was hard for me to drag this and adjust it. So I had to look at it and estimate and type in a number to try and make it the line that I wanted. But that does save me a lot of time by not having to draw that line again. Um, you can see I, I have some uh, some parts here that I want to actually go outwards on. Oops, I accidentally closed the whole sketch. I didn't mean to do that. Let's reopen that sketch. And then I meant to click the check mark on the offset tool, not the check mark on the sketch. So I want to add some of this. Um, you can zoom in more to add a little bit more detail. Um, hit escape to stop drawing if you wanted to stop. And you can use the trim tool and just drag across any lines that you would need to erase. Apparently that was hard for it to figure out what I wanted. So this is another option, is drawing with the line tool. We'll see if this processing gets done here or if I have to make a cut. Um, uh, yet a third option is to use these shape tools. Um, the ellipse tool in partic particular has also, I've run into a few troubles with, where um, the ellipse will sometimes break uh, and not consider it uh, a shape anymore when I do things like add points to it or stuff like that. So be careful with the ellipse tool. But by defining things geometrically, sometimes you get better results from that and you can definitely use offset for that. Okay, and we're back. That was a full-on crash. I think what happened was I was trying to trim this line, but my segment here actually crossed over the line instead of matching up, and I think it just didn't like that at all. So um, let me also show you, so like... For these ones, these are pretty simple. You could just either turn them into circles or you could use an ellipse. I think these ellipses draw from the center, so I'm going to start in the center and uh, use ellipses for these, um, which is going to make them maybe a little bit more regular than the little scribbled dots that they were originally, but I think it'll turn out okay. And I could do the same for the irises here. Just turn them into an ellipses. So I think that's pretty ready to go there. Um, now, when I'm extruding this, let's see if I if I just go to extrude. I don't want to extrude the whites of the eyes, so it's gonna guess what I want to extrude, and it's uh, it looks like it only extruded the white of the eye, or and and the, some of the black, but not the iris. That's not what I want, so I'm gonna close that. And we're going to try and grab certain things. If you, I, I don't know how to choose a certain thing other than just move my mouse around until the thing glows that I want and then click it. Um, and I can actually add more than one, I think. So I should be able to add these things. And I might need to move around, hold control, make sure that I get that blue highlight around it. And I know for what I'm doing right now, I need to be 55. So that's what I'll go to is 55, and I'll hit the check mark. Ooh, did that work? Oh, yeah, it hit itself because the whole rest of it was hidden. Um, and I think it was set to add. So if I show now, now you can see where I'm headed with this. Uh, I had to hide it because I couldn't see it to trace it. But you can see I'm making a cookie cutter with these parts uh, denting the cookie. So there's my results there uh, using the line tool and offsetting and then using some shapes. Over here on this eye, let's hide this again. And let's try this other eye and I'll do it a little differently and you can see the pluses and minuses. So let's see if I can get this with all ellipses and things like that. So we wanna start with the XY plane, sketch. I'm gonna start with an ellipses. Uh, we'll do the iris first to get in the habit. Oh, I missed a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll undo that and try again. Ellipse. I think just estimating the center is where I got off there. I did it again. Not great, but you can see I'm changing the shape a little bit here. Um, I f think maybe... I'm going to do a three-point circle instead for this part, and let's see if this works for me. One, two, if 
three. Could be worse. All right, and then let's try offsetting that. Offset that. And I'll try and drag it a little bit. You see I am regularizing this eye a lot. Um, okay, that looks okay. Let's try that. Uh, check mark. All right, and then on this one, I could do a circle again. Let's try a three-point circle again. I haven't really tried three-point circles very much, so I'm curious if I can do stuff like click here and here, and then I'm snapping to too many places here. Let me scroll in a little bit. Something like that. Hmm, could be worse. All right, and what if I offset that? Can I offset that circle? Yep. Maybe not quite that far this time. Make it a little thinner. Okay. Check mark. All right. And then maybe I need to obviously do some trimming here. So I'm going to grab the trim tool and I don't want this line. So I get rid of it. I don't want this line. I don't want this line. So just drag over the top of it. Come on now. Drag. There we go. Uh, no to this. No to this. No to this. Okay. And then I need to get rid of this part out here. So I could just draw a straight line segment. And let's just cut that off. Escape on the keyboard to stop drawing straight line segments. And one more straight line segment over here. And this is going to significantly change the way this looks. But it's just another way of achieving sort of what I want. And then we can uh, do my trick with the ellipses over here. I'm snapping to a bunch of stuff. You can turn off the snap or you can just zoom in. Either way works. All right. Now I should be able to extrude the parts that I want to extrude. So let's go to extrude. And it's going to guess. And it almost always guesses wrong. But let's see. Ooh, that's, you know, nope, it guessed wrong again. But let's close that. And make sure we get the lines, the iris, the freckles. 55, it's remembering from last time. That's good. I like it. It says add, check mark. It's going to automatically hide. And then I can show and look at my final results and see what I like. Come on. Where's my show menu? Well, let's just go on too slow. I'm being impatient. There it is. Show. So now I have all that. And now I can actually hide my picture. So now it definitely looks like it's got a face. I still need to add in the taco-ness to the top. But there's a cookie cutter with a face. That's a smiling taco.